About 8% of Americans have diabetes. Doesn't sound too bad, right? Well, I'm not done yet. I have more numbers. New cases of diabetes nearly doubled in the last decade. Since 1980, the number of Americans with diabetes has more than tripled. Oh, and that 8%? That accounts for over 26 million people. Then there are another estimated 79 million that have what's called insulin resistance, or pre-diabetes. This is why we call diabetes our modern-day epidemic. The only good number in there is that we know roughly how many people are in the pre-diabetes stage. By knowing that, we can also know how many people we can save from progressing to type 2 diabetes. Pre-diabetes is very important because in that, that category of patients, uh, they have the same risk factors as patients who have type 2 diabetes. They can have the same complications. And if they're caught early, we can prevent the progression to type 2 diabetes. Usually, we recommend lifestyle modification with the weight loss and with exercise. These patients are able to prevent the progression to type 2 diabetes and to also prevent the complications. We catch people in this pre-diabetic state through screenings. We aim to regularly screen those who are older than 45, those with a family history, any woman who has had gestational diabetes during pregnancy, and those of African American, Native American, or Latino descent. By catching diabetes and prediabetes early, we hope to prevent the following common complications from developing or, if they're already present, stop them from getting out of hand. The patient can develop vision loss because they have damage from hyperglycemia that affects the small blood vessels that feed the retina. They can have cataracts, they can have glaucoma, or they can have what we call retinopathy. The other complications that diabetic patients are prone to is periodontal disease. Bacteria accumulates in the mouth in diabetic patients, and so they're more prone to having gum disease. So again, a routine dental screening is important. Patients may have what we call neuropathy, which is damage to the blood vessels that are, are, are feeding the nerves. And this will lead to loss of sensation in the extremities or painful neuropathy, such as burning, tingling, or uh, frank pain in the extremities. They may also have uh, damage to the nerves going to the stomach, which can lead to problems with digestion. Another complication is damage to the kidneys. There are small blood vessels feeding the filtering system in the kidneys. And so patients may have damage to these small blood vessels, and that can cause kidney failure over time. But the one complication we're most concerned about is the damage high blood pressure can have on the cardiovascular system. Diabetes is considered to be a coronary equivalent, and what that means is that a diabetic patient who's never had a heart attack is as likely to have a heart attack as a patient who's already had one. In diabetics, 65% uh, of uh, deaths come from strokes and heart disease. Diabetic patients are two to four times as likely to have heart attack and stroke than a patient without diabetes. And so it is really, really important that they get screening either by their primary doctors and they should all probably be seen by a cardiologist. Studies show that when we strictly control the glycemic levels in the newly diagnosed diabetic, meaning we keep the blood sugar levels inside a pretty narrow range. We can decrease these cardiovascular outcomes. And the earlier it's diagnosed, the easier and more effectively we can reverse the complications. So one of the goals in a diabetic is to get them to an appropriate blood pressure goal. Also, we target their lipids. All diabetics should have a lipid profile that's within goal, and specifically, their LDL should be less than 100. Their triglycerides should be under 150 and their HDL should be above 40. If they're not able to achieve this with diet and exercise, as most people aren't able to do, then we add a, a statin therapy to their regimen. The other risk factors that we target are smoking. Smoking cessation has been shown to have a decreased outcome of cardiovascular disease. The other risk factor that we target is really the weight, which is one of the biggest issues. As I mentioned before, obesity can cause diabetes, and we need to target that. We try to get our patients to ideal body weight. If we're not able to do that, even losing 5 to 10% of their body weight can have a tremendous impact on their diabetes and on their cardiovascular outcome. And what about folks who aren't pre-diabetic and want to stay that way? You should also be watching your weight, your cholesterol, your blood pressure, and get plenty of exercise and never smoke. Yep, these numbers are startling, but that doesn't mean we can't stop them in their tracks. 
We just have to be aware and do everything we can to get those numbers to fall instead of rise. I'm Dr. Mike Rosen, and you're watching the eHealth Network. See you next time.